You didn't you ready? Ladder, are you? This guy and this beautiful lady, they met doing the bungee together, fell in love, and got married. It's true. That's how we do it, scrub style. Just in time, head down there for Gotta meet the new boss by 8 a.m. Don't ever touch me. Hello, people in DVD land. I want to give you something. <laughs> yeah. Superman. When I first came onto the show, they wanted a very real, authentic look, and that's why they chose to shoot in an actual hospital and not to build sets. The reality is healthcare in our country is so messed up that we had our choice of deserted, closed down hospitals. North Hollywood Hospital is a cavernous four, five-story little hole with uh, three elevators, two of which work, one only sometimes. We sprung more leaks in the first season than an old ship. <coughs> They wanted this place to feel like it was a cheery place in 1964 that had fallen on hard times. And so given that this hospital had been decommissioned like seven years ago, it wasn't such a hard thing to do. Actually, when we first started shooting here, there was uh, patients would arrive and need treatment. There was this one guy who was like bleeding. And we're all standing there in complete doctor gear with stethoscopes. And there's extras walking around or decked out as doctors. And we'd be like, sorry, this isn't a real hospital. And they're like, but it looks like it is. So now we have these huge signs saying, this is a set. <laughs> we have a lot of help to uh, make the show look medically accurate. Um, the, uh, the show is actually based on this guy who we call Real because he's the real JD. So whenever he comes into the hospital, nobody calls him JD. Everyone's like, hey, Real, what's up? And uh, him and his wife, Dolly, are fantastic. When I first saw that the character was named after me, I, uh, and then I saw the, saw the pilot, I was uh, hoping that my patients wouldn't put two and two together. <laughs> John Doris and Dolly come in for every scene that we have where there's any kind of medical procedure. And also we'll call them up if we look in a script and see that we have to say something and just to make sure that we're pronouncing it right. What is uremia? That's my boy. It's hard. You just got to sound it out. It's like another language. You know, you just sound it out phonetically or something. Johnny C is great with it. Sarah's really good with it. His H and H dropped three grams, so I'm starting pressers. Or you could transfuse him. Okay, I'll do that. Although transfusions are riskier. We still have no idea what we're saying. Looks like a break in the ulna. Next try it. Postpartum hemolytic. Uh, erythema migraines. And the great thing about the footprint of this building is that it kept everyone together. The other plus is uh, being in what can truly be described as a giant, creepy, deserted, asbestos-filled hospital creates a situation that the network and studio executives rarely drop by here and wouldn't want to. They've given us the freedom to do whatever we want to do within certain limitations. It's almost like a giant treehouse in a way. It's sort of like it just belongs to us. It's like being away from mom and dad a little bit, but they know we behave, you know, for the most part, so it's cool. The writers are the reason why it works so well. You get the script. It's like, it's Christmas in September. You can't believe the stuff you get to say on national TV. And you, you neurotic one-woman freak show, take your blah-blah to the blah-blahologist. At the beginning of every year, Bill does like to map out the first six, seven episodes. And then we come up with arcs for the characters. So stories are kind of in place. We all, as a group, come up with a story idea, and we are all pitching jokes, and then the one writer takes that outline and goes away and writes the draft, and then as a group, we rewrite it. More than any other show I've been on, this is the most collaborative show, and the most fun because of it. A lot of single camera shows, the writers live in one state, write the scripts, and they go off and shoot them. And here, when we write the scripts, when we, when we go up and rehearse them before they shoot them, writers are up there, other actors are up there, everybody's up there. It's a creative environment so that if it doesn't work, we don't just shoot it anyways. People will be pitching jokes, uh, coming up with stuff, making fun of each other, which leads to other jokes. And so we end up becoming close with the actors. We really get to know what their strengths are. We incorporate their personalities in the show. They'll come pitch stuff to us because they know us better. They'll feel more comfortable. The writers vacuum up everything in the building. They see what we do. And if they hear a tone in your voice, they're going to get that tone in an episode. And I think I speak for the entire administration when I say whoop-de-doo.
I've had a lot of my colleagues say to me, of all the medical TV shows, this is the most accurate. And maybe not, you know, all the little intricacies, um, but the emotions that the characters go through. In the first couple of years, we interviewed doctors, so we came in with stories that we'd have heard over the hiatus. What was the most embarrassing situation for you? Uh, what was uh, the biggest mistake you made? Uh, when did you feel the, the most scared, the most overwhelmed? You know, you can think of something ridiculous that you would never be able to do on a four camera, and you can actually do it on this show, which makes it much more fun and free. The text they crank out is just, it's stunning. Should I talk slower or go get a nurse who speaks fluent moron? You want to do our father and, you know, thank somebody for the text you get. Unbelievable. Cabot is the guy, he did Spin City too. He's, he's, he's amazing in, in uh, uh, two very specific things. One, what we wanted him to do was keep this looking like a dank, rundown teaching hospital. The problem being, it, it did look that, but it had no communal gathering places. Do you know what I mean? So it had no places where doctors and people would naturally st stop and talk. So uh, uh, what I really needed from Cabot was to create that admissions area. We opened up a lot of walls in the building. This opening here, which is part of the admissions desk, is a new opening. So we, we really went around the building and punched holes wherever we could so that we made it more camera friendly. Uh, the disgusting hallways existed. What didn't exist was this cool ICU with all these windows and depth and these neat nurses stations where people would hang out and talk. Laverne, can I borrow a nickel so I can get a soda? Sorry, this window's closed. We essentially gutted the hallway and then installed camera-friendly units like this so that if they want to do a reverse shot, this piece is on casters and can dolly out real quick. Why do all the good ones have boyfriends? His second burden was, I said, Cabot, the hospital rooms I know you'll be able to conquer, but you have to know as well that we're going to see a restaurant, a bar, Dr. Cox's apartment, J.D. and Turk's apartment, all the other things that we saw. And uh, here's the caveat, they're all going to be in this hospital. No! What we were going for with uh, J.D. and Turk's apartment was, you know, these are two medical students who are just out of medical school. They're in their first year of residency, and they really have no money. A lot of the furniture were things that they might have found, things that they might have brought from college. Rowdy, no. Yeah, Rowdy, hit that! <laughs> Dr. Cox's apartment exists in a hospital room. I don't know how they pulled it off. Dr. Cox was almost the complete polar opposite. We wanted him to have a very sterile environment. We actually took one of the operating rooms and it had aluminum grills and chrome surfaces. We introduced some lighting elements and we brought in very contemporary uh, 20th century modern furniture. We've built nightclubs, bedrooms, guest bedrooms, kitchens, Kelso's apartment, Dr. Cox's bedroom. Sorry I woke you. The office was fun because uh, they actually took one room and split it in half and put a wall in just to make it even smaller than it already was. Necessity really is the mother of invention sometimes. You just have to like pull things out of a hat and make it work. Maybe you should just calm down. Maybe you should calm down! Bill okay. said, you know, it'd be nice to have a picture of Ted's mom there and uh, asked if I wanted to use my real mom's picture, which I did. So that's my, that's my mom over my shoulder looking over me. That was great because it gave her 15 minutes of fame. Bill and I have always said we have a very strict no asshole policy. Which is the only way to lose your job is to be a jerk. Basically everybody is here to do their job and have a good time and not act like an asshole. When somebody says if you're an asshole, you're not gonna be here for very much longer. You'd be surprised on how much nicer people will be. <laughs> we work hard and we work long hours, and so you, you better not, you know, bring a bunch of nonsense with it, you know. And it's, it's worked pretty well. I mean, everybody uh, really does get along, and I've never been on a set where uh, people uh, work this hard and, and have a good time doing it. I've had offers to go to other shows. You couldn't drag me away from this place. It's home, man. We like it. <laughs>